Hello, everyone. Well, like everyone else, I've been baking during the pandemic. And one of the things that I learned how to do uh, and noticed it on the internet one day, and I was so intrigued, I decided to try it for myself. And it is the no need bread. It is, um, it is an artisanal bread. And it is so much fun to make. It, um, it'll, give, it'll make you proud when you do it. So I'm going to do it for you. I've done it in different stages, so I could show you what it looks like every step of the way. So you don't have to wait for me to do, to do all the steps. So here they are. This is what you're going to need. You need three cups of flour. You need a little bit of extra flour for adjustment. And I'll show you how to do that later. You need two tablespoons of salt and one teaspoon of instant dry yeast. And that's pretty much it. That's for the ingredients. And then if you, you can, I'll tell you later about how you could adjust, how you can make different flavors, different uh, variations of this bread. But this is just a plain white bread that you could have for breakfast or lunch or whatever. And we'll talk about that later. Anyway, I'll stay focused on this. You also need a scraper if you have something like this. One slice, one piece of uh, parchment paper and a roasting pan, a little um, a Dutch oven or a little roasting pan with a lid on it. So we're gonna start. I'm going to put my flour in, my salt and yeast, and with a wooden spoon, just mix it just so that you mix your dry ingredients. And if you were to add any other flavorings, you would do them now. You wouldn't do it after the wet, you would do it now. Then this is hot water from the tap. Don't put in boiling water. Boiling water from the kettle will destroy your yeast. So this is hot, as hot water as you can get from the tap. There's about two, I have about two and a half cups here, but I'm going to start with two cups because it could vary your liquid. And all you're going to do is mix. That's all you're going to do. And you're going to get, you won't touch it. That's the beauty of this thing. The whole process of doing this, the actual hands-on process is about five minutes, not more than that. Everything else is rising and baking time. So here you are, I've mixed it. This is what it looks like. It looks like this. It's a messy, just nothing fancy, nothing. If, I don't know if you can see it, but it is like that. All you have to do after that is just clean off your spoon. And what you're going to do now is cover it. And Cover it with plastic wrap. I like to put oil on top of it to keep it nice and warm and a towel and leave it there. Don't touch it. Don't check on it. Don't do anything. Don't, don't mix it. Don't knead it. Nothing. And after this one's been around, I've been writing this one for about a little under two hours. And this is what it looks like. It is jiggly. You see how it's jiggly? And it's it's quite soft. It's it's like it's like a very thick cake batter, and you'll see a lot of bubbles in it. And it's it's very jiggly. So now what I'm going to do. Oh yes, and before I forget, make sure before you do this that your counter is really good and clean. So then now I'm going to take the extra flour and I'm going to put it on my counter. And this is where your dough will become a little bit firmer. I'm going to pour all the dough on the flour that I just put on the counter, like this. And I'm going to put some on top. And now I'm going to take my, my scraper and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip it onto itself.
maybe maybe about about 10 flips maybe sometimes a little bit more and what I need to do actually is I forgot to do this before I've got to wash this out I'm just going to rinse it out with cold water now in the same bowl that you mixed your dough you're just going to put some parchment paper in like this nest it in and just flip your dough so that you can pick it up because what you're going to do now is transfer it to the bowl. Like this. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle or a perfect ball. It doesn't have to be smooth and you'll see why later. And that's it. So now I'm going to cover it again. And I've got one here actually. I'll cover this one. It's going to rise because this is going to be my next dough. And it's going to stay there for a little while, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. In the meantime, what I have done, I've got my roasting pan, my covered roasting pan in a 400 degree oven, which I have uh, preheated. I preheated my oven. And make sure you use gloves when you're doing this because it's hot. So my, oven, my, my Dutch oven is very, very hot. This will have sat for a few minutes. Put it in the Dutch oven. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little uh, cut in it, actually a very deep one. And it's going to give you that artisanal look. When it's all finished, you'll get like that beautiful crack in the middle of the bread. So I'm going to go really deep into this dough. I'm going to try to show it to you. And I'm just going to cut like this, very deep. And I'm going to cover it up, paper and all, into the oven. It is now going to go into the oven 400 degrees. It has been, my oven has been preheated. So, and my pot has been preheated. So the pot is very hot because it's going to seize the bread that way. Seize your dough. So now it goes in like this for 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, I'm going to remove the lid, set it aside. It'll now be an open lid. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it on for another 20 minutes with an open lid and let it continue to cook. And what will happen is you'll get a nice crusty loaf. Now, the reason why that you're covering your, your, your bread is it creates a steam inside and steam will create for you a crusty loaf. So I've done one before. There's one that's all finished and here it is. Here's my paper on it. The paper comes right off very easily. There's the back bit. It's, it sounds hollow. That means it's done. And there's your beautiful crusty loaf. I'm letting it cool now. And then you could just cut it. And then when you do eat this, this is really, really nice. You could do this Christmas morning. You could actually do it at seven o'clock in the morning and have fresh bread at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. It's, it's, it's pretty uh, fail proof. I mean, anyone can do this. It's really, really easy. But this is wonderful if it's toasted. You could eat it with um, just, I like to splatter it with butter, but these days I'm not doing that. Uh, it's wonderful with labne or with honey or with, um, with jams or Nutella or anything that you like. You pick what you like and eat it. And you can, you can vary, vary this uh, recipe when you're doing your dry ingredients. You could do something like uh, putting some raisins and cinnamon. Do that when your dough, when your, your flour is still the, just the dry ingredients. Um, you could do olives and zata. So you could do a savory one. If you do the sweet one, add a bit more sugar. If you do, um, if you do a savory one, then it's just salt. 
but zaatan and kalamata olives would be delicious and you could eat that with lamne. So you could do anything you want with this. It's really, really fun. And the beautiful thing about this is you've made it yourself. You could be proud of it and feel good about doing it. So Christmas morning, you could do something and surprise your family or even do it for yourself um, and have a nice fresh loaf of bread um, that you've made all by yourself. And in the meantime, I wish you all a happy holiday season, Merry Christmas, and God bless you all. See you soon. Bye.